Wenatchee is gorgeous in the spring with its lush green rolling hills, abundant wildflowers everywhere, and the views of the Columbia River. The local food scene offers an abundant selection of authentic international cuisines featuring the unique farm fresh ingredients of the region. Wenatchee is also home to award-winning wines, handcrafted hard ciders, and a talented handful of local brewers producing fine craft beers. Visit Wenatchee, the heart of Washington State. New on Curiosity Stream. With superior armies comes superior weapons. How has innovation mechanized the battlefield? From bullets to battleships and everything in between, it's machinery of warfare. Plus... From the gross Ew. to the gourmet, mm. see how that in-flight meal lands on your tray table. On secrets of your airline food, it's all on Curiosity Stream. Annual plans are twenty dollars, just a dollar sixty-seven a month. Visit curiositystream.com. Hey, this is BJ. Thanks for listening to our show's podcast. If you're a fan of all things geeky, you should check out my other podcast, BJ Shay's Geek Nation. We have new episodes every day, and you can check it out at bjgeeknation.com. Your wages are being garnished. We can stop that now. It's hard enough to pay your bills when things are good, let alone when a big chunk of your take-home pay is gone before you even get your check. I'm bankruptcy attorney Travis Gagné, and I can stop the garnishment and get the creditors off your back immediately, often the same day as our consultation. Both Chapter 7 and 13 provide bankruptcy relief, but choosing the right chapter is crucial. In a free consultation, we can create a plan to get your finances back under your control. The chapter you choose sets the tone for the next chapter of your life. Please contact me today at ChooseTheRightChapter.com. That's ChooseTheRightChapter.com. 99.9 KISW, The Rock of Seattle, and yes, we are an Odyssey station. In case you missed that announcement yesterday, uh, we are now Odyssey. And if you already have the Radio.com app, don't worry about it. It's automatically changed to Odyssey. So you just see that bright orange app, and that is Odyssey, baby. Uh, And if you haven't, download the Odyssey app today. That's uh, A-U-D-A-C-Y. And all the audio that you want in your life, Odyssey is going to have for you. It's pretty awesome, actually. They've got a lot of cool things. The uh, podcast, digital content, sports stuff. Heck, you can even do some sports betting. You can do, there's so many different things. All sorts of cool different people in the world. Whatever you want, man, audio-wise, Odyssey's got it for you. And uh, that's, of course, where you can listen to KISW as well. And, uh, I mean, news, sports, podcasts, what do you want? Everything that moves you, baby. Part audio. Part audacious. Part Odyssey. A-U-D-A-C-Y spells Odyssey. Let's play B. It's Wednesday, right? Yes, it is, sir. Nice. Yeah, so we can wax Steve. Whack it. Oh, yeah. Let me see everybody do their Mr. Wacky then. All right. Woo! Whack it. Yeah, it's a beautiful Wednesday. Let's get to whacking and let's get to our contestant. We got Sean in Grapeview. Sean, are you there? I am, Rev. Good morning. Good morning. All right, Steve. Get out of here. For those playing at home, Sean will have 60 seconds to answer 10 questions. Sean, you can pass all you want, but you will only get three guesses per question. Are you ready? Uh, Let's say yeah and go for it. (laughs) Good luck, sir. Ewan McGregor is famously known for playing which character in the Star Wars universe? Only one. Yes. Which Canadian province is immediately east of British Columbia? Repeat the question. Which Canadian province is immediately east of British Columbia? East of British Columbia. I don't know, Pat. During which inning of a baseball game are fans encouraged to stretch? Sixth? No. Seventh. Yes. Beginning with G, what is the real first name of Jerry Springer? Jerry Springer. Jerry Springer. Gerald? Yes. What are the strips of tissue which connect bones together called? Ligament. Yes. Ligament. The Nuggets are a professional basketball team from what city? Denver. Yes. In which decade was Christopher Walken born? Decade? Yeah. 50s. No. 60s. No. 70s? No. Oh. 30s. No. 40s. Okay. 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 Uh, Reggie White played in the NFL from 85 to 92 with which team? Oh, Reggie White. Oh, boy. One chance. Uh... 
Uh, either Dallas or 49ers. I'm going to say Dallas Cowboys. No. One, uh, yeah. two, three, oh, four, on. five, correct. Yeah, you were way and off. And it wasn't uh, the other one either. But, uh, yeah, you know, hey. Good. Yeah, but you know what? That's going to happen. You know what? <laughs> you're going to not know things. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's a good way to put that. Some Sometimes yeah. you're just not going to know things. All right. Well, we'll <laughs> see how Steve does because Steve sometimes doesn't know things either. Yes, but sometimes he does know things. Yeah. Well. That's what you call either or. <laughs> yeah, one or the other. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> Steve, are you Whack ready? It. Oh, yes. Whack it. Ewan McGregor is famously known Ewan. for playing which character of the Star Wars universe? Obi-Wan Kenobi. Yes. Nice. Wow. Which Canadian province is immediately east of British Columbia? Um, Calgary? No. Edmonton? No. Ooh, Alberta. Yes. Thank you. Nice. During, which, uh, that's what I meant to say. <laughs> during which inning of a baseball game are fans encouraged Seven. to stretch? Yes. Beginning Ooh. with G, what is the real first name of Jerry Springer? Gangster. No. Uh, Gerald. It. Yes. <laughs> what are the strips of tissue which connect bones together called? Oh, um, Kleenex. No. Uh, lig- ligament. Yes. Ligament. The Nuggets are a professional basketball team from what city? Denver. Yes. In which decade was Christopher Walken born? 40s? Yes. Nice. Reggie White played in the NFL from 85 to 92 with which team? The Packers. No. Oh. Uh, hey. Bears? No. Uh, Bears. Why, who the hell did he play with? Oh. That's what I'm asking. Oh. Yeah. Can you tell me? No. Uh, <laughs> wow. Giants. No. no. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. You win. Seven to five. Sorry, oh. Sean. Sorry, Shani. <laughs> That's all right. Good game. Peace out, y'all. Take care. Take it easy, buddy. Steve, come on, buddy. It's your home of Rocky. Yeah. All oh, the Eagles. The Eagles. Damn uh, it. Yeah, I remember everyone having his uh, jersey back in the day. I just, in my head, had him as a Packer. And then after that, my brain just shut down. Yeah, I absolutely. think he did play for the Packers for a little bit, if I'm not mistaken. He did. Yeah. But uh, he was uh, he was an Eagle. He was an Eagle through and through, even when he was a Packer. Was he? <laughs> That's what I'm going to say. Okay, cool, perfect. <laughs> well, he played for the Packers for, it looks like, five years. Uh, okay, yeah, I think, yeah, it was uh, the longest with the Eagles. So, yeah. yeah, that's why I went with that one. Uh, and, uh, well, congratulations, Steve. You didn't get that one, but you got the rest, and you won. Yay! 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 Hey, you know what? That's a celebration. I think it's really cause for a big party. And according to this new survey, pretty much almost half of America says, yeah, we are going to throw the biggest effing party of our entire (laughs) lives when the pandemic is officially over. Are you guys of that mindset? No. Uh, To me, neither. I just just want to go back to just normal. I don't don't go to big parties anyway, so. Yeah, the biggest thing that I want to do is have a big Halloween party this year because we didn't have one last year. So, and we, that's usually like our thing. That's the only time we have like a lot of people will come over to our house. And when I say a lot, I mean like 10. So, but that's, that's the biggest thing that I'm looking forward to. But not the biggest party of your entire life. No, no. Which is interesting because I wonder what that really means because the same survey found out that even less Americans are going to start going to things that they used to avoid or flake out on before the pandemic. Um, But I guess go to the parties they didn't ever wanted to go to beforehand. Oh yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, I was I was thinking events and things, but yeah, you're probably right, Steve. It's like when they said flake out, it's like they're going to not basically take for granted being around people. Right, maybe I will go to my friend's kid's birthday party. Fine. Right, maybe. baby showers, <laughs> weddings, bachelor and bachelorette parties. I am surprised that people don't go to bachelor and bachelorette parties. Why would you flake out on that? That's like Sometimes a- it's expensive. Yeah. And oh really? You got to pay. They're obnoxious. Yeah. Uh, well, like I have some buddies that one of my buddies, I mean I was going to do it, but he wanted to go to Denver uh for his bachelor party because it would have timed out right to go be able to go see a baseball and a football game. And I'm like, oh, that'd be fun. And then I started doing the math. I'm like, crap. I'm, of course, going to go because he's my homie. But I was like, geez, man, plane ticket, you know, tickets to the games. It's going to be a pretty, it's going to be a massive dent in the wallet. Yeah, see, guy, I forget that that's what goes on with these destination bachelor parties because I just thought you go in your own town and just have a good time. But you're right. People do go places. And not every town has a strip club. 
That's also oh well, true. Yeah. That's a, yeah. that I'll drive. I mean, you, can you, you you at least can maybe drive to a town that's got one, right? <laughs> I mean, hopefully, unless yeah. you're in the middle of uh, nowhere. But you never know what kind of quality you're going to get. I kind of oh. want to go to the middle of nowhere strip club. <laughs> yeah, Danny, come on. <laughs> There's one in. Have you seen the one in Astoria? I have. Every time, yeah, yeah. Every time you go by the way, I always, I want to go in there. Like, what what kind of action is happening Wait, here at the Astoria, Astoria strip club? In Astoria? Oh yeah, yeah. The, gr- the girlfriend and I went there and we played pool and it was. Oh, you were in there? Oh, yeah, we went in. We so went how in. was we it? We were how excited. Was the, how was the quality? Do all the girls look like sloth from the Goonies? Kind of. Oh, kind of. And there was, there was oh, just not a lot going theme. on. There was two strippers there. There was one that was stripping in the back, and the other one was kind of just drinking at the bar. Nice. And didn't approach us or anything. And yeah. we, so we walked in, we ordered drinks, and we played pool on the dirty pool table. And we are like, yeah. this is kind of awkward. So we left. Oh, that's where I want to see. Now I want to go there. I mean, <laughs> I, I wonder if it's any worse or better. You've probably never been there many years ago. There was, I don't even know if they still exist, but there was a place in Ballard called The Sands, which was a, a gen- oh, gentleman's dear. club. And I teach gentlemen very loosely. <laughs> and there my buddy and I, we walked in there. And as we walked in, the, there was like two dancers. They did not look like they a, should be dancing, nor did they look like they wanted to be dancing. One was just smoking cigarettes, sitting on the, the stage. Yep. Oh, and then she wow. sees us walk in just goes, <laughs> and then goes up on the stage and just kind of hangs there while still smoking the cigarette. This is like back when you could, I guess, still smoke cigarettes inside of an establishment. Yeah. And we never even took a seat in that place. Like we walked in and just kept walking and walked right back out <laughs> through the back door. <laughs> wow. Yeah, you got it just It know. was gnarly, man. Wow, that is, uh, yeah, that sounds like a delightful place. It was yeah. super nice. Yeah. Oh, yeah, super great. <laughs> super awesome. So that's what I picture when it's like the Astoria strip club i feel it's gonna be on that level yeah, i mean yeah. we would have had fun like i mean we like i said we had a great game of pool and then like if i if i went there with the boys like it would be fun too but at the same time it's just like yeah i want to go somewhere else I, th- I think we should go to vegas yeah so, somebody says that place is called annie's in Australia. yes it is yeah did it have <laughs> <laughs> what i expected Uh-oh. danny's story is exactly what i expected <laughs> what a weird yeah. thing man. i never would have guessed that a story it's like ocean shore is having a strip club yeah, exactly. You That's why expect I, it. No, I, I was always surprised because I'm never, I mean, I never, I always go through Astoria to get to wherever I was going in Oregon. So that's why, but I always thought, man, if we were staying in Astoria, I think I'd have to check this place out. But we were always driving through. So I'm glad Danny told me. I mean, honestly, though, you could probably take board games in there and play board games like around the, because they had t- like a bunch of open tables. There you go, BJ. They had drinks. They had food. Look at this. They did board have game food. strip club. I yeah. never thought of this idea. And probably for the right price, one of the girls will play board games with you. Yeah. That'd be fun. Boy, that would be very distracting, though. Really. I'd be having a hard time making moves if I'm looking across the table and then there's a naked chick I'm playing games with. Well, that's how they get you. Once again, sloth from the Goonies. I mean, hey, you guys. All right, then. Well, for <laughs> 50 bucks, I'll give you the truffle shuffle. <laughs> nice. I know, that might be worth it. I think I might pay for that. We got a woman who was on a first date with a guy and... Jumped into a muddy river during the date. Why? Oh, I'll tell you. At 717 on The Rock. BJ and Migs. Mornings on The Rock. 99.9 KISW. 99.9 KISW. The Rock of Seattle. There's a woman. Her name is Lizzie. She's from England. And she recently had a Tinder date with a guy whose profile picture was with him and his dog. So for their first date, they decided, hey, let's go for a walk with our dog by by the river. So, you know. I mean, not, you can't really do idea. much these days, so I guess that makes sense to do. Not, just go for a walk. Not my ideal first date, though. I mean, I don't mind going for a walk with her, but uh, I, I, there's no way I'm going for a walk with somebody and their dog on the first date. It ain't happening. <laughs> well, yeah, you probably wouldn't swipe on that person anyway. Yeah, right? yeah. Yeah, you're right. I mean, unless I really was attracted to them, then I'd probably have a big fight going, you sure you don't want to get rid of that dog? I mean, you know, the president had to get rid of his dog, and he's doing okay, right? Hadn't gotten rid of it yet. Yeah. Uh, A few minutes into their date, though, here's what happened. The dog jumped into the river, and Lizzie jumped right in after the dog while she says the guy stood there giving, quote, useless suggestions, and she rescued the dog. Uh, They all kept walking for about 10 more minutes while Lizzie was covered in mud, and then they both went home. I don't know why they just wouldn't go home right away. Once I mean she's covered in mud, you got to you got you got to take her home, don't you? I, this whole thing seems kind of odd. I mean, I'm with you, Steve. Uh, first of all, the jo- the dog jumps in the river. 
I mean, I don't know. Dogs can swim pretty good. I don't know why she thought she had to go save the dog. I, I don't have enough of the story to know if the dog looked like it was having a hard time. But usually dogs jump in rivers and then they come back out again. They, they do that a lot. Yeah, she says the guy was too busy flapping. So she darted down the bank and into the chest deep water to rescue it. Saying she was left struggling to climb back out while the man was just making, like you said, useless suggestions. Yeah, he, uh, of course, uh, texted later that night, wanted to check on her, apologized that he didn't do more. And she was she said, quote, she was too traumatized to respond. Uh, there's just not enough about this story that I know. You know what I mean? I just feel I like I imagine the dog must have seen like it was like having a tough time in the water. Otherwise, why? You're right. Like, I would just be like, dude, that's weird. Call your dog. Get the dog out of the water that way. Yeah, uh, I, I guess you know, unless she over, unless she overreacted, I don't know. I have no idea. It's it. I just you know, I mean, I don't know how bad it could be, but dogs usually can get around. They get they they're really good at getting out of stuff. I mean, she might have overreacted. She was wearing a shirt that says "cute but psycho." Oh, that's oh. a perfect shirt to wear on a first yeah. date. <laughs> Wait, wow. yeah, hold on, I love her. Wow, <laughs> what a great shirt to wear on a first date. Yeah, that says it all. I mean, you, you talk about truth in advertising. Yeah, you know uh, what you're getting. I'm siding with the guy on this only because of the fact that, I mean, look. Because you don't Lassie, like dogs. L- Lassie, <laughs> Lassie can rescue kids in a well, right? I mean, that was then, Well, that was television, but sure. Yeah. That's also not Lassie. But most dogs are really I good at I thought that was Flipper that saved the kids. <laughs> oh, fl- fl- Flipper? <laughs> we can't take flipper a dolphin, dolphin for a walk. Oh, yes. I don't. <laughs> yeah, uh, I, this is, yeah, this this whole thing is just a... Uh, it's the lukewarm topic of the day. I'm just shocked you didn't at least try and go with the line like, oh, I know you're a dirty girl or something, you know? Oh, nice. Yeah. That would have been a great line as soon as she rescues your dog all just covered in mud and you're just, you did nothing. Then you come up with that line, Steve. That would have been perfect timing. Well, this woman on a Tinder date, she jumps into a muddy river to save the guy's dog. Based on this, what was the most unforgettable date that you have ever been on? 206 421 Rock, text us at 77999. What was the most unforgettable date that you've ever been on? Your calls, your texts after the Foo Fighters on The Rock. BJ and Migs, mornings on The Rock, 99.9 KISW. 99.9 KISW, The Rock of Seattle. There's a woman that was on a Tinder date who jumps in a muddy river to save the guy's dog. Based on this, we want to know, what was the most unforgettable date that you've ever been on? 206-421-ROCK. Text us at 77999. Let's go to Don and McCleary. Don, you are on The Rock. Hey, how are you? Welcome to the show, Don. What you got for us? So I was living in another state, and um, this was probably 15, 18 years ago. And I met a guy for coffee, and he told me how his wife had recently passed. It was like a month ago, and I'm like, why are you dating so early? And then he told me that his um, ex, or not ex, his deceased wife's parents had taken the kids away, and he was very depressed, and he wanted to date a nurse because... um, he wanted to get his kids back because his uh, mother-in-law had been a nurse and maybe he'd get his kids back. And I'm just like, oh, no, red flag. Wow. Just be nice to the man. Be kind because, you know, the guy's depressed and right. just get through the date and go home and never call him again. And so then he goes on and he's talking about he wants his kids back. And did I want to see a picture of his kids? And I'm like, OK, you know, just be kind. He shows me a picture of his kids, and I'm like, oh, nice kids. And then he's like, do you want to see a picture of my dead wife? And I'm like, oh, okay, yeah. fine. Right. Wow. He shows me a picture of the woman in the casket, and I'm like, oh, Whoa, hell wait. no. He showed wow. you the actual picture of her being dead. Uh, why? Yeah, he showed me a picture of his wife in the casket. That's... And with the, with the two kids standing there, and I'm just like... I, okay. You told me not to swear online, so I'm not going to tell you my thoughts. <laughs> so... Uh, <Wow. laughs> Yeah, that's. I mean, no. you know, I mean, and you and, and you're 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 right, Don. I mean, the guy you you want to be nice to the guy, but he shouldn't be on a date. He should be on a therapist's couch. I mean, really, and I don't mean that to be facetious. I mean, he definitely needed to have somebody to talk to. It's just you know, you know, a first date is. Oh man, sometimes you, you just need a good friend. You need a good friend to go, dude. This is what you need to do. Going on a date with right. all that drama. So soon after your wife has passed away? No. I mean, how do you think that... I should show her a picture. I mean, I, I can understand you want to show a picture of your wife. It's still... 
I mean, it seems a little much, but like that's kind of weird to put someone in that position during a date. But to actually show a picture of your wife deceased in a casket, yeah, I that's a whole other show- level of weirdness. I would have thought he would have showed a picture when she was alive. Right, like here, here we are in Hawaii. Yeah. Oh, I mean, all as there was so many things wrong with that first date. He did so many things wrong. I, I don't think he got anything right on that first date. You should not a show thing. a picture of anyone in a casket. Like, who takes pictures at a ca- like at a viewing? Dude, it's so weird on social media. Sometimes I see that, and I'm just like that. I'm just not of that thought process. <sighs> What's worse are the people that take a picture. Like a selfie with the person in the casket, or even just the casket. Oh, oh like that's Instagram been done selfies. like a selfie with a, ca- a, ca- a I, selfie I casket may, shot. May not know somebody on Facebook who did this. I right, fine. Okay. I was on Snapchat, and you could put the cool, like you know, puppy <laughs> filter on it. And I okay, thought it was that's funny. Fair. That's oh, fair. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I didn't share with anyone but you guys. And thanks, Vicky, for diming me out. Well, All plus right. it and it goes away, Steve. It wasn't permanent. That's, that's right. That's what I mean. It was, I yeah. only said it for seven seconds, not even yeah. ten. I mean, come on, Vicky. That's <laughs> different. It's, it's Let's, go to, it, that Let's go to Caleb in Puyallup. Caleb, you are on the rock. Hey, guys. Welcome to the show, Caleb. Uh, how about you? When were you on the most unforgettable date? Uh, so my wife and my third wedding anniversary, we were meeting in Bellevue uh, for a night out. And I was supposed to meet her there. So I'm driving uh, 4 or 5 South, and I jump on a conference call for work. And I keep having my wife call me. I'm like, in call, in call, not answering. I'm on a conference call. Can't can't talk right now. Uh, I see the big header board that says uh, stalled vehicle uh, expects two hour delay. And so I'm like, great. So I'm on my conference call. Finish that. Hang up. Call my wife and find out that she is the stalled vehicle on oh. 405 South, oh. and I have been ignoring her call for the past hour and a half. Oh uh, damn! So. That was uh, a very unique anniversary experience. Yeah, that's uh, that was not a good day for you. <laughs> oh man, that's 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 tough. You you you, you know, and you're like, oh, I, okay, who would have thought you were that vehicle, dude? I bought this text message at seven seven nine nine nine. Says I had a date with a girl that was way out of my league, so I pick her up, and as soon as she gets in the car, she says, "Quote, let's get this out of the way," and then lifts her top, letting me see her breasts. Yeah! Whoa. Best she, date ever. She explains right. that guys are distracted by them the entire day trying to catch a look at them. So on all of our previous dates, that's how it was. So she just said, you know, what? I want to get to know me. Let's get that out of the way. Works wow. for me. I wonder, did he, did he say if they're still together? I mean, I, I think you just go to the ring store and buy a ring for that girl. Yeah. 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 Put a ring on it. Let's that get is, this um, out of the way. Whoop. I mean, honestly, wow. I probably would have still been distracted because I'd have just been like, more? Is she going right. to do it again? More? Right. Again? I feel like we haven't really gotten this out of the way yet. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm not too sure how that would... Yeah, I don't know how I... I think that would be... Yeah, yeah I'm with you, Danny. Let's I test the like, theory and try it again. Yeah, I think in like, the back yeah. of my mind, like, this is going to be the best date ever. <laughs> right. <laughs> wow. That is... Uh, yeah, that's that's very unforgettable. 206421 Rock, Texas at 77999. Uh, Vicky, I'm sure you've got some wonderful date stories. I think one of my favorite favorite date individuals was the time I went out with this guy and we met at the train station because it was a nice midway point and then he proceeds to tell me about his girlfriend and that how he's like I might dump her I went through her phone it's my right as a boyfriend to go through her phone and she was talking to guy friends so that's why we like that's why I said we should hang out you know just to you know whatever and then we went to IHOP and he didn't even tip the waitress so uh, so oh he's a winner yeah there's three strikes and this is what'd you get at IHOP Good I call. think I got a waffle because I love waffles. Oh, I should have got the Rudy Tootie Fresh and Fruity. Oh, that's a good one, too. I don't know. But again, you're at the International House of Pancakes and you got a waffle, huh? Yeah. I, I'm, I'm, I'm a waffle she, person. She goes by her own rules, man. Yeah. Yeah. Waffles over pancakes any day. I mean, I get waffles all the time, but you know, if I'm at an IHOP, it's like, well, they are the International House of Pancakes. Well, I should we, really see what we they We don't get. have a waffle house here. What right? can you do right. about that? I understand. That's why, I mean, you can get waffles at a lot of great breakfast places. But when you walk into the IHOP, again, what are they internationally known for? What are they the house of? Yo, burgers. Burgers. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I remember IHOP? Yeah, that's right. Because if I'm on a date and I'm at the (laughs) IHOP and and, and the girl orders a waffle, she's out. It's over. (laughs) Oh, okay. Wow. Even if she has a boyfriend. Hot take. I'll be, I get a waffle over a pancake at IHOP, too. Okay, yeah, that's right. You know what? You. You, you're, you're both not going to be dating me. I, I just want to let you know. Don't even bother. <laughs> I think in the past, I just got their chicken fried steak and eggs. Oh, okay, yeah. again, no pancakes. This is the house, 
that's known internationally for pancakes. Now, what is, well, then why do they have other things on their, their, their mm-hmm. menu there, BJ? Well, yeah. Probably because they know yeah. commies are going to walk yeah. in. They know that commies are going to walk in at any time and they have to serve everybody. What if she started the date by showing you her pancakes and then you got a waffle? Ooh, let's just get it out of the way. Uh, if Steve showed me his pancakes, I might let it go. Oh, cool. I, I, I might let the whole thing go. What about my sausage links? Oh, God. <laughs> Excuse me? Oh, uh, uh, weird transition. I see your daughter's in the room, DJ. <laughs> well... I, 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 I asked Sarah to come into the room because of Rev's story, and I figured because it does actually, uh, Rev, I, 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 I've got an inkling that Rev's story might concern my daughter. Absolutely. The most memorable date that I've been on is when uh, Sarah had somebody win a date, and we all got to go to the steakhouse with her, and she doesn't eat meat. Best date ever. It was oh, fantastic. Yeah. I know. The, the date was supposed to be for Sarah, and really the date was for Steve and everybody that went along because they wanted a steak. Yeah, yeah, and my date who ended up getting two steaks because he took my steak and I took his salad. Awesome. And I Which I was upset get... about because I wanted the other steak. Hey, I had to be nice to my no, date, I right? Get it. We were just there just right? to be chaperones. Yeah, and it was like all filmed, and then yeah. I watched the entire thing back, and I was like, this is as cringy as I thought it was. Super <laughs> cringy. But BJ, we didn't go for a free meal. We went to protect your daughter. Yes. You just don't know what kind of people you're going to put on a date with her. Totally. Yeah, exactly. That's how you know, it was all for Sarah. You know, take a vegetarian to a steakhouse because you cared about her. Yeah, you guys are so nice. But this is before me. So can we do this again? And I know Sarah has J-Rubs now. So can we just do this with Joey and then I could go with him? <gasps> yes. Yeah. yeah, win a date with Joey. Win a date with Joey D's. I, th- I thought you want this to be a contest that people want to win. I bet there's at least. <laughs> oh, oh, damn. Your dad. Son, man. <laughs> Joey, your dad just did you dirty. So dirty. I mean, look, we, no, it's just we work at a station where it's mostly dudes. Who the hell's going to want a day with Joey? Dude, we got ladies listening, and I bet we have at least three ladies that would want to go on a free date with Joey. And we got a oh, date with him that. once. We can do it again. Yeah. yeah. Remember, Our- BJ, you flew some woman out from. Uh, yeah, I had town. to fly the woman out. <laughs> you know, it wasn't exactly like she volunteered. It was like she wanted an internship, and so she's like, sure, I'll do whatever I can. I'll date your kid if I have to. Yeah, no <laughs> stake for BJ. She got the internship. <laughs> Yeah, she and she did get the internship, actually. Um, well, listen, if you think it's a worthwhile contest to do, do win a date with Joey, I uh, look. I, well, more uh, importantly, uh, Joey, how do you feel about your dad and his lack of confidence in you? Yeah, I'm pretty pissed off, Steve. <laughs> <laughs> I would be, too. Prove well, him wrong, Joe. Prove him wrong. Well, the track record, gentlemen. All I have to say is look at the resume, look at the track record. Uh, that's all I got to say. I can't believe this, Steve. I'm in the other room thinking we're having a great topic. This is amazing. And then I get brought up. Danny does me a nice little favor, throws me out there on the radio. And who lets me down? Your father. My father. The rest of us were like, we'll go on the date with them. Full confidence you would get a date. Full time. Yeah, that's exactly what you want to do. Another steakhouse. Go, good job, Joey. They just want another steak, Joey. Hey, look, if my son, if you can get him a date that somebody who really would like really want to go with him, go ahead. You know what I say, Steve? You get two steaks and BJ gets two salads on my date. <laughs> well, I'm looking at the text. Uh, someone says, I'm a guy. I'll show Joey a good time. Oh. Next one, oh. I'm a dude. I'll, I'll date Joey for the steaks, of course. LOL. Hell yeah. Yeah, that's what's going to happen, boys. <laughs> that's it. That's I, you know what? I didn't see anybody in the room also but really 100% believing that Joey is going to be able to make this happen. Based on his track record. Yeah, he can go on the date. We get a meal. Sounds great. Yeah, here we go. Hey, I'm a 30 year old lady, and I'd like to win a date with Joey D's nuts. Yeah, oh, there's wow. one. All right, there's one. She even spelled nuts with a Z. Yeah, she yeah. does. She likes to party. That's where you're fancy. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, we have a great contest. Let's call it. Let's get the sales department. The texture. I'm 41 and single. All in. Yeah. yeah. Oh, oh, look at that. The older to- woman. All right. Another person, I'd enter that contest. Plus, I'm like Sarah. I'm a vegetarian, so you can get two steaks. Ooh. I okay, like this then. idea. All right, so <laughs> we got, here we go. Look at we this. Got, we we got up. five people that said they want to be a, be a part of this. <laughs> Three girls and two dudes. Okay. Not Sounds bad like so th- far. Thursday nights on NBC. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Joey D, see that? It was all my plan, you know? That oh, yeah, sorry sure. Sorry for you. Sure. Yeah. It was all my plan. Yeah. <laughs> okay, we got a we got a lovely story about a man who rappelled down a six story building all because of Pokemon. I'll tell you all about it. It's seven forty nine on the Rock. Today's podcast was brought to you by Travis Gagne, bankruptcy attorney. He's here right now and has agreed to answer more of your questions about bankruptcy. 
How much does bankruptcy cost? Usually with my office, we, we do a flat fee that includes all your court costs, filing fees, credit counseling, credit reports, and one cost in Chapter 13 cases. That usually starts at about $900 uh, with Chapter 7 cases. So total costs, including all your court costs, attorney fees, is usually about $1,500. We offer payment plans on Chapter 7s. So you can start a file with my office for as little as $200. You can send your creditor calls to us. We'll take your creditor calls while you get gather up your information and, and pay, make payments on the rest of the fees. With Chapter 13 cases, uh, we can make payment arrangements in most cases as well and get your case filed even sooner in a Chapter 13 case because of the reorganization aspect to it. Thanks, Travis. If you have more questions about bankruptcy, you can reach out to Travis anytime at ChooseTheRightChapter.com. That's ChooseTheRightChapter.com. Thanks for listening.